first impressions are so important when it comes to the front of your house. You almost judge people on the way the front of the house looks. Hmm, very nice. Well, let me tell you, it's exactly the same when it comes to the back garden. This back garden is the perfect example of a bad first impression. The first thing you see is this big block of buildings here. Then, your eyes drawn over to the nasty-looking bins. And as you turn back around, well, the things in the veggie patch are looking nice, but the whole thing needs a bit of a revamp. So I've got some ideas for trouble spots just like this. Get rid of our bins, I'm going to be building a screen. Now, I want something quite tall, about 1.8 metres. So I need to go into the ground one third of that. So I'm digging a hole that's 600 mil. We're going to put in two posts, bolt one to the wall, and then we can put some slats in and some vertical black butt screening. Not only is this going to hide the bins, but any other junk in the garden is going to be kept behind here as well. That way, when you're in the garden, you get a lovely, peaceful setting. <laughs> pre-cut our black butt decking boards ready for our screening. Now, I've cut these to 1.7. I said our screen was 1.8, but by cutting them 100 mil shorter, it gives us a bit of play in the height because we're not on an exactly level playing field here. I've also pre-drilled and countersunk the holes ready to go into our rails. Now, what I'm going to be doing is using this fancy little shaving brush type thing to oil the back of our boards. The reason I'm oiling the back of the board is to protect it. I don't want the boards to cut. With our framework complete, I'm just giving it a lick of black paint. And what that does is it makes it disappear, and the black butt screening that goes on front, well, that becomes the star of the show. When it comes to getting your screening boards on your screen, I've already clamped a spirit level to the top. So I know my top's going to be nice and level if I just use that as a guide. I'm also going to use the plumb line of the post for my first board. I'm going to put one screw in the top and one screw in the bottom and leave out the middle. I'll use a packer to space them out, and I'll do five to start with. Once I've done five, I'll go back and pop this packer in the middle and screw the middle off. That way, it's going to take out any bows of the timber. You'll also notice I've got offset screw marks. If I had them all straight along in one line, it would never be perfect, and it would get really quite annoying to look at. By offsetting them, it takes out just those millimetre imperfections give you a much more professional look. If you're doing this by yourself, you could clamp it off, or you could summon yourself a special genie, allow me to rub my lamp. JR! Here he is, perfect. You don't mind holding this for me, do you? Not at all. Thank you. You can see what I mean with this centre rail. Our first gap is absolutely fine. The second one, far too big. The one after that, too small. So I'm going to get a chisel into this one, pull it all over this way, and make the gaps nice and even. just applying our oil to the front face of the screen now to finish it off. Now, this is going to protect it against the sun and the harsh elements. A couple of things to remember is you always want to work the wet edge, so don't do the top half and then the bottom half, otherwise you'll get a line across the middle of the screen. So go from top all the way down to the bottom. And I know you've done the back and sides, but don't forget to do the cut edge on top, because that's where water will get in. I've got a few jobs to revamp our veggie patch. First of all, I'm going to take off this capping. There's a mighty cut here, and over time, it's just opened up. So I'm going to replace it with these thicker boards, and I'm just going to give it a nice square finish. It's never going to open up.
Last up, I'm going to be putting a lattice screen across the back. You can grow broad beans, you can grow cucumbers, maybe even try pumpkins. Well, we haven't spent much on this veggie patch, but it's already looking better. We're fixing up this little courtyard by removing some of the common eyesores you might have. And I'm using these to bring in some planting. These are Corten steel rings. You can just pick them up at the hardware store. You see how easily they slide together. And then they've got some lugs on them, which you just push down with a screwdriver. I'm having one in each corner so we can get loads of plants in, try and screen out this block. It's really important if you're using an open ring planter like this to remove the grass underneath. Don't just put soil on top of it, otherwise the grass is going to grow back through. Even if it doesn't, it's an organic product, so it's going to break down and all your potting mix is going to sink. So really important to remove that. We're actually going to lay them on a sand cement mortar bed as well. That way we can get the tops perfectly level and they're not going to sink over time. Waking sleeping hearts to stars ignite. For our raised planters, I really wanted to get some height in here to help screen out this ugly block. But if I'd gone for big trees, it would feel really heavy and make this small space feel even smaller. So I'm using ornamental grasses, and this is Miscanthus sinensis. It really likes free-draining soil, so putting it in the tallest planter is best for it. You can see it gets to about 1.8 metres tall, but it's got these really lovely flower heads on them that move around and dance in the wind. We're never going to screen the building out completely, but they just help to just baffle it just that little bit. In our low squat planter, I'm using a Kalinkoe called Copper Spoons. I really love the tone of the top of the leaf here. It goes perfectly with our steel planter. As a combination, I'm using this rosemary. This one's a prostrate run, which means it grows really flat. Actually, its habit's more like waves, so it's going to spill over here, really soften this planter, and work perfectly with the copper spoons. For our final cluster, right by the entrance of the garden, I've kept with a similar theme. We've got the upright rosemary and the Miss Muffets, but in the wider planter, I'm using philodendron xanadu. This can take full sun, full shade. You pretty much can't kill this plant. And then I'm finishing it all off with a lovely fine gravel, just to give it that designer edge. <sighs> One trick to divert your eye away from less attractive things in the garden is to create really attractive things, just draws the eye in. So along this edge of the garden space, I'm going to be putting in a garden bed. And on the big blank walls, I'm planting these. These are a variety of Eliocarpus. Now, they're a rainforest tree, which means they don't have a particularly deep root system. I've got a lovely upright shape in this rosemary. And to contrast with it, the rounded shape of this Pitosporum Miss Muffet. Now, rosemary and Pitosporum really like free-draining soils, which is handy because we've got quite sandy soil here. The rosemary I've placed under the window so the fragrance can travel inside. And the Miss Muffets, they get a really lovely, sweet, fake orange smell to the blossom. They're going to fill out and form these lovely mounds. And it's the contrast between the rounded and the upright that I really love. A little bit of styling, some festoon lighting, and the garden is looking incredible. Can you remember what this looked like when we first got here? It was uninviting, and nobody wanted to spend any time out here. The bins, well, we've screened those. They've gone. 
The veggie patch has been updated and makes you want to get your hands in the dirt. And we didn't really do anything about the building, but who cares when you've got an amazing garden like this? This is the perfect spot for outdoor living.